When we see a future where there might be 10 billion humanoids on the planet, our mission really here is to expand human capabilities. If we have humanoids in the market able to do any physical labor, think about what that does for the world. Labor is a choice. It'll free you up to do more things you love every day. And we think that's really an exciting and inspiring future. Yeah, I actually grew up on a third generation farm, corn and soybeans in the Midwest, in central Illinois. I would say for a long time that I really wanted to build things and uh, and make something in this world that doesn't exist. In high school, I kind of, it became really apparent that there was like kind of three areas I really wanted to work in, AI systems, robotics, and the internet. And so I've been spending the last 20 years building companies, trying to help improve humanity and make an exciting future. I mean, we're basically at this robotics and AI revolution. Nobody's been working on this hardest problem in robotics, which is like, how do we do physical labor? What is needed for that is something like very mobile, dexterous, and be able to build like a, basically an AI data engine so that the robot can learn how to do basically more things every single day. You know, here we've kind of embraced that complexity, both on the mechanical and software side, and built a very complex platform that can do basically anything physically a human can do. I think the conventional wisdom here is when we walk into a customer, say like a big warehouse or manufacturing or retail company, that we've basically been taking people's jobs. And that, that couldn't be further from the truth. When we walk into these facilities, there's a giant labor crisis going on. These companies are losing 50 to 150% of employees annually. They can't find anybody to do these jobs. They just don't know a solution to help automate through these problems. We feel, I figure, the demand for what we're doing is almost unbounded. I would say we're trying to be one of the first in the world to deploy us at real scale commercially. Yeah, welcome to Figure. Uh, we're building humanoid robots. Let me show you around a little bit. So this is our robot test area. Uh, we have two robots currently live that we're operating every single day. Our goal here is to mature the robots to a point where they're doing commercial tasks every single day in our facility. This is actually the torso for the first generation robot. This houses uh, computers, power distribution, a whole host of other electronics. So basically we have like a manipulation area here where we're working on developing our current next generation hands, like end effectors on the robot that can basically grab anything a human can grab and do work with it. These are all the lineup of our next generation actual pairs that we've designed all in house. Our largest here is for the knee and hip. We make all of this fully in house. We've been running them now for the last like 60 days. This is the largest motor and actuator on our next generation robot. So this is our fabrication facility. So we're able to basically make at this point now any single part on the robot. And this is really critical for speed. So every morning we shake out the robot, which means it's doing about three or four different types of uh, movements to make sure that the latest code is running well on the robot. There's no hardware issues as we approach the day. And it overall just keeps us disciplined. Like we need to be operating robots every day. This robot here is our first version robot. We have five of them in our facility. It's a fully electromechanical system. So it means batteries and electric motors. It has about 30 degrees of freedom, multiple different types of cameras for perception systems. Right now, what we're trying to do is doing fully end-to-end -end autonomous applications with this robot. So can we do like human-like work at human speeds? Uh, over the last 30 days, we've been able to demonstrate uh, that work here in our lab. So we hit a really important milestone this summer where we walked uh, a dynamic bipedal humanoid with which we did in under a year, and we believe is probably the fastest to have done in history. Since then, we've done full end-to-end -end application autonomously with our robot. It's just getting all the different subsystems across like 10 different teams to all come together to work. Having to do that on the timeline we did means like integrating a system up really fast. And to be honest, the last six months have been like bring up hell. Everything that could go wrong has gone wrong. We've had suppliers deliver us product that was just not working. We've had to build 911 teams internally to go build new uh, parts of the robot to make sure it works. The robot's performing really well now, but that's like, that's the state of hardware. You gotta kinda, you know, dive deep and fix these problems. We really wanna build this general interface, a robot that can basically interact with like many different types of applications and tasks. We wanna be able to do the same thing humans can, sit in a chair, operate machinery, use tools. We're really focused here on delivering a really high quality hardware platform and then basically building a high level AI system on board that can continuously improve the systems and the robot learning over time. We very much have a machine learning first strategy around perception systems, manipulation policies, and overall getting the robot to do these applications. That puts a lot of pressure on us to build like basically the right AI data engine from scratch and build the right training sets for the robot to make sure it can scale successfully by itself in any environment. I uh, figure we're a year and a half old. We're about 70 employees. And one of our core philosophies is moving really fast. The hardest part we've had last 18 months has been there's not really a lot of commercial supply chain for humanoids. So what it's forced us to is basically design almost entire system from scratch. Outside of maybe the compute, everything else besides that we we designed here at Figure. And that's, uh, as you probably are well aware, a very steep learning curve. So we've had to design 
The actuator is basically from scratch. The battery systems, operating system, control software, a lot of electronics are designed from scratch. I mean, basically designing what is the best robot possible we can get, get out the door. I think I have like two big philosophies that are really important to building out this area of kind of deep tech now. The first is you need a really great team. So I spend a lot of time recruiting what I think is the best engineering team in the world. And two is I spend all my time on product and engineering. At the end of the day, that's like the most important thing we do is ship a product that's useful or service that's useful to end customers. We have like a really unique culture here where we want to move fast. We want to be super optimistic. We want to do like really great engineering work. The culture we had instilled here is just not for everybody. We're in the office basically five to seven days a week. We work really hard. Uh, we really care about working on the product. So we're really looking for that unique person that kind of wants to go out and put a dent in the world. We've now assembled about 70 engineers in the team that I would say are the best in class at what they do. What's going on over here? Yeah, uh, Teams does push-ups twice a day. <laughs> <laughs> Why? I, I don't know. <laughs> We have this philosophy here that we talk about, it's like the only way out is through. I think for entrepreneurs, if everybody knew how hard it was, they won. It's, it'd be unclear how many people would actually go out and do this. In some ways, like that, that level of like uh, ignorance is actually kind of helpful. <laughs> My advice is just get out there and start building. Start building stuff at subscale, start building that stuff in simulation, start getting just something built, start learning. It's like a stair-step approach over time, right? Like you're learning, you're recursively getting better, you're making less mistakes, you're progressing the technology, you're raising more capital, you're getting better customer feedback. So I think my biggest advice is to get out and start building as fast as possible. The problem we have here is a humanoid has never been commercially viable. There's never been a humanoid put into a real application, getting paid real money to do work. The core focus of what we're trying to do here at Figure is be able to produce a commercially viable robot in the market, we think in the next 12 months. So that means getting a robot fully autonomous system set up and integrated into our clients' facilities, doing end-to-end -end work, hopefully up to 20 hours a day without any human assistance. So we spend a lot of time at the requirements level trying to understand what our client needs are. So if we're gonna ship robots into warehouses, manufacturing, different levels of retail, we have to know like what actual work we're gonna be doing. That basically helps define what the robot needs to do from performance, safety, cost, manufacturing. So we'll do different trade studies on, should we use battery cells? What type of form factor? Should it be cylindrical, prismatic, pouch? Should the motors be linear or rotary? There's just a whole host of different decisions that we have to go and make. I would say for the first alpha build that we did, we've made about 70 to those decisions last year, like what, what we should do. We then went out and did a bunch more testing. We built the robot and we're slowly validating all those decisions to make sure we're right. All the right decisions are being moved into the next generation robot and all the wrong decisions were being re-looked at and rethought out and put into the next robot as well. We have a really strong roadmap to support a very fast paced commercialization plan. We're all working five to seven days a week now trying to go hit that. We have to get a robot into our clients' facilities doing real actual human-like work. It needs to be safe. It needs to be reliable. We have to do that in an environment that's really like high veritability, really dirty. Everything that could go wrong will go wrong. Getting the robot to work in those type of environments is going to be extremely difficult for us to do. And that's the next big hill for us to climb. I think the thing is, is like, what, what kind of impact can I have when I'm alive? What has like the highest lever arm for that impact? Technology has the ability to touch like billions of people's lives at this point. So my advice would be to kind of find those areas that are kind of new and novel, spend a lot of time like really deep in the rabbit hole, trying to figure out like what that looks like, get your hands dirty, more answers will come the more time you spend in those environments. Make sure that you're really in it for the long haul. Like this is really a 10 plus year journey. This is not a few year thing. So make sure you see yourselves in 10 or 15 years in that industry doing this thing and being happy. I think it's gonna be really important. Uh, so at least for myself, like I think of this is probably a 20 year endeavor, 30 year endeavor, my rest of my life. I couldn't think of anything more exciting and more challenging to work on. And that gets me really excited to wake up every day. The next couple decades, you're gonna see humanoid robots basically going from kind of the science fiction view to like in actual real life. As we approach the next 10 or 20 years, every person in the world has a humanoid. And that humanoid will do everything for you physically. Uh, grab you the coffee, go do an errand, whatever you need to do. It'll just be like having a phone. Humanoids here have the potential to be the largest market on the planet technology, if not pushed up the hill, doesn't happen. So somebody's got to get out there and really push the envelope. And it takes a lot of effort from a great team. And we've assembled here probably one of the world's best teams to go after this very hard challenge. Looking back when I'm like 80, I want to look back and say, where did I spend that time? What kind of impact I made? And has it been helpful? And I think at least today, it feels like these are the right projects for me in this time to be working on to make that impact.
That was insane. I've been wanting to feature figure for a long time. I have this like secret list of like top 10 companies that I want to film. And figure is very high on that list. It's weird how fast the figure team has been able to move in less than a year. Going from like a concept to a robot that's walking and then saying in a year we want to be like in customer facilities working and learning through that process. This is such a perfect episode to end season two. 20 episodes of week after week uploads from S3. I think this just embodies, I think, the, the peak of what it means to build something really exciting and hard. Against all odds, against all common wisdom, these are the exact types of teams at all sizes we want to feature on S3. And so having this be a company that, that we end season two on is, is incredibly meaningful to me. It's also just insane that we made it here to the end of season two. We've been doing this for 20 weeks. It flew by. I feel like I blinked from episode five on and now we're, we're here. I don't quite know how we did this. I do know that this would not be possible mentally for me if I didn't have the support, encouragement, and interest of everyone who's watching this and who's a fan of the show and a fan of this tech space that we're trying to improve the storytelling on. So from the bottom of my heart, Thank you. It's incredibly motivating when people reply, like, argue about the startup and the, and the replies, and, and just in general can at least agree that this is what the tech space needs. That's really my mission right now is like, how can we provide better storytelling for groundbreaking startups and teams with S3? And then for, for the news side of things, how can we like better capture the amazing stuff that's going on in the space and get the rest of the world as excited about it as we are? From the bottom of my heart, thank you for being a fan of this. Thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting and please keep doing so. I'm really excited to keep growing this and see where we are in another 20 weeks. So yeah, 20 episodes, end of season two, beginning of season three, starts next week. Thank you all for the support and let's keep building the future.